Okay, this is the southeast corner of the house. This looks like it might be part of a septic system, a passive septic system. You want to find out whether that's legal in this area. It looks like we got something of an aerobic system over here. I am not a septic system expert, and I am not doing a septic system inspection. Uh, we got some clean outs over here and some clean outs over here. But we're looking at the walls. We're coming down here, and our rain gutters are discharging too close to the ground where they are and our rain gutters look at that are a little worse for wear I don't think that these rain gutters were replaced at the same time that the roof covering was replaced <clears throat> roof covering lasts about 14 years rain gutters last about 14 years oh you need a new roof but you don't need new rain gutters now you're leapfrogging now the rain gutters aren't going to last as long as the roof and you're going to be dealing with that just letting you know Satellite dishes should not be mounted directly to the roof covering. We should, nor should they be mounted on the fireplace chimney. And the fireplace chimneys should have a cap. That chimney does not have a cap. Our exterior receptacle outlets, okay, they should have in-use covers, like bubble covers on them. And um, they also should be GFCI protected. I have not found any GFCI protection on the exterior walls. We're missing some screens here on the back side of the house. All the screens across the back side of the house are missing. Coming along here, we've got, you know, it's kind of precarious, but that is our overflow drain. The water comes out of this, in theory, in front of a window, you know, then you're aware that you got a problem with your air conditioning. We've got a vertical crack between our soldier brick and the mortar and the northwest corner of the patio the living room south wall west windows frame is separating from the uh, lentil right there separating from our lentil see that separation in there lentils rusting in there when it rusts it expands and you know what I'm not seeing over the lentils we pulse okay oh We've had some foundation repair. It looks like it's fairly recent, so there might be some better documentation on that. Then this looks like it's not as recent, so you kind of want to find out what the story is behind that. Everybody wants to know. It's not unusual to see foundation repair around the um, chimney. This is a weep hole. This is a weep hole. Brick is a very good building material. This structure can burn down and you can reuse the bricks okay but it's porous it's a great insulator too but it's porous and it lets water through so we know that there's a void behind here this is a, a facade okay this is a stick built house this is a wood built house your wall is behind the brick the brick is you know it does have some structural use you know it does provide some strength it is durable it is uh, good for maintenance almost maintenance free so but it's porous so we at, at our drainage plane okay at our drainage plane our water table we have weep holes every so often they allow vapor out if you have an event more water will pour out of there but most of the time it's vapor and I'm not seeing any weep holes oh there's one right here that's a weep hole but I'm not seeing any weep holes around the uh, back porch in fact I'm going to write that down because I'm a writer. No weep holes at the back porch. Okay. So when you have lentils like this, these lentils are supporting the brick. And I get it. We're underneath the patio cover. But still. Okay. We've disrupted the drainage plane. And weep holes are required over these lentils. And we do not have weep holes over our lentils. Although we do have a nice big gap right there and I wanted to take a picture of this cancel my camera is just wanting to do things for me it's wanting to do things for me I'm not asking it to do We don't have any wind pollution. So that brings us over here to our deck. 
And our deck is over off of our patio. And I do not know how far the patio extends. I do not know how these posts are connected. And these posts are spaced farther apart than eight feet. So I don't know if that was engineered to be that way. That's kind of beyond what I do. But by the way, there it is. And then we got some checking here. Okay, that does not affect the strength of the post. So I'm told it does not affect the strength of the post. It's a natural byproduct of cedar. If some of the rustic, at some point, when somebody's in the uh, lumber yard, they decide whether the checking is acceptable or not. They say, like, "Oh, I can't handle that much checking." Okay, I don't want it to look like that. Then that would be it. It would be an aesthetic decision. You don't have to buy a post that is all split up. But anyway, that's the story behind that. Coming on on. Okay, flagstone is nice. I've got it all around my house. But it's not dimensionally uniform. So if you get somebody over here that's geriatric, uh, somebody that's absent-minded, somebody that's inebriated. But for all these things, you get somebody over here that might be a little balance compromised. And this could be a trip hazard. Some of our rain gutters go below grade, but all of our rain gutter downspouts discharge before they get to there. All of our transition boots are missing. On and on and on and on. Okay. Rain gutters should not discharge directly onto the roof. Now, our roofs only last about 14 years, so there's that. Okay, so the cure could be worse than the ill because you're going to have a downspout and you're going to look at that. So whatever, whatever that is. But rain gutter downspout should not discharge on the roof. Anytime our drip edge, our drip plane intersects with the wall plane, there should be kick out flashing directing water back into the rain gutter. We don't have that. Our rain gutter butt ends are supposed to be a minimum of one inch away from the wall. Okay, we're trying to keep water from running down this window. That's what we're trying to do. But the way it is, we're just inviting it to run down the window. You're very welcome, rain. Thanks, man. I was trying to get in out of this weather. Okay. All right, we got a little gap here. I don't know what this cable is for, all bundled up. It looks like it's 220. It looks like there might have been a condensing unit out here at one time. This is the lawn sprinkler control wires. This box, this is the junction box taking power out to the garage, and this box has been buried. You think water is going to go into the bottom of that box? I do. That's what I think. I think water is going to jump right down in there. Moving on along. We got some separation between our garage cart entry casements, our vertical casements in the brickwork. We got some separation here. We've got some separation here. And then we've got some cracks between our mortar, these stretcher bricks. Some people call them dog's tooth bricks, whatever. But we got some uh, uh, separation, mortar separation, cracks, crack mortar right in there. Uh, we got some um, soffit damage right in there. And you can see that the rain gutter has been leaking. And uh, it just would have been nice if they would have replaced the rain gutter at the same time as they, but they didn't. Electric meter is sealed on three sides. That's pretty cool. Moving on along in front of the house, we've got a lot of storm windows. Uh, this rain gutter right here is hanging and sagging. And uh, moving on along and things are looking kind of nice over here. Except no weather covers, in use covers. Oh, we got one transition boot left. Okay. High soil. Where do termites live? In the ground. Oh. What do they eat? Dead wood. Oh. What's wood mulch? Dead wood on the ground next to your house. It's called a clue. We've got high soil back up in here, wood mulch next to here. This is the formal dining area. We got gaps between our window frames, all three of them. Or more <coughs> window frames in the brickwork. And then again, we're coming over here. We got some wood rot on our lower casement right in there. I don't know if you can see that so well. I bet you can. Wood rot. That's the kitchen windows. That's the fascia board. It's all 
all jacked up, man. And then we got some more wood rot on this window right here. And we got some high soil conditions right in here. Bushes touching the house, bushes touching the house. There's some drill holes on the patio. I know this house has been treated. I saw a notice posted underneath the kitchen sink. I know this house has been treated. This is a second verse, same as the first. Um, rain gutter butt in too close. No kick out flashing. Rain gutter directly onto the roof covering. Now, this is an interesting thing. I got another video for this, but this is where I put my ladder up. And um, the roof decking doesn't make it to the fascia board. Huh. There's a big gap between the fascia board and the roof decking. It's not supposed to be like that. Gaps. Gaps. Let's see if we can drill holes on the front porch. I want to get in the shade a little bit actually. Trees should not be closer than 20 feet to a slab foundation. Okay, you're supposed to have an even, consistent amount of moisture content around the structure. And the tree that close will rob the moisture from your foundation. The tree roots will grow and move your foundation. The tree branches will wreck your rain gutters and your shingles like they have been. More high soil right in here. Trees too close again. If this is for the water heater, it's not supposed to shoot out straight. It's supposed to go down, you know, between three and six inches. And this is about where the water heater is located, which tells me that I don't know. I thought I had another one around here. Oh, that was for the, the outbuilding. It went too high too. Both water heaters, the temperature pressure leap valve drain piping is too high.